Hello everybody, it's Azat and welcome to 80s Portal. Now today we are doing a video on a very little known game that has a fascinating story behind it. 1985's Polyplay. Polyplay came out in 1985 and it's the only game to be made in East Germany during the times of the Soviet Union. In 1949, shortly after World War II, the Soviet Union split Germany into two states. The Federal Republic of Germany was controlled by the Western powers, and it's mostly known as West Germany. The German Democratic Republic, or GDR, was controlled by the Eastern powers, which is best known as East Germany. While West Germany was like how it is today, with a freedom of Western media and capitalist government, East Germany was a Soviet Republic which severely restricted any form of Western media due to its link to capitalism. This sets the scene for polyplay as one of the forms of media that was suppressed was video games. Polyplay is a game made by the company VEB Polytechnique. As I said before, polyplay is notable because it's the only video game ever to be developed and released in East Germany. The cabinet was made of unvarnished wood, which if this was the 1970s, that would be normal. Just look at the Pong arcade cabinet from 1972. However, Polyplay came out in 1985, where arcade cabinets having meticulous drawings and art on the sides had become a regular thing. Just look at the Gauntlet arcade cabinet, that was covered in artwork. The only art to speak of on the Polyplay cabinet was the marquee, which had the name brightly lit in an electronic looking text. The game was only available in certain places, which included youth clubs and, most notably, holiday homes for members of the FDGB, or the Free German Trade Union Federation. Polyplay contained eight different mini-games, all with German titles. Supposedly there were some cabinets which had four more games, but none of them have been tracked down. In terms of pronunciation, I will only be pronouncing their English names, as I don't want to offend anyone and my German pronunciation isn't too good. Deer Hunt is a shooter game, much like Robotron 2084, a game I intend to play at some point on this channel. You play as a hunter, and the goal of the game is to shoot a fleeing deer. Every 15 seconds or so, the deer must be shot or it will be lost. Only 10 shots are available. The second game is Hare and Wolf. This is essentially a Pac-Man clone where the hare must eat everything it can before it gets caught by the pursuing wolf. A pea equals one point, a carrot equals five points, and a pair equals seven and or ten points. The third game, Downhill, is a simple sports game where the player must ski between the flags. The gates range from six to 0.2 meters wide, which makes the game get faster and faster. Butterflies is a game starring two characters from a popular children's show in East Germany. In this game, flowers act as obstacles and must be traversed while trying to catch butterflies in a net. Shooting Gallery is a clone of Carnival, where the player must shoot to score. A balloon gives one point, a duck two points, and a flower three points. Motor Race is a car racing game where the player's car must win two out of four rounds. It's not a difficult game, as the player car turns much smoother than the CPU car. Memory Game is exactly what it says it is. You must remember all the pictures and reveal them, playing against time. Each picture has its own sound. If you forget a picture, its sound will play. Water Pipe Burst is the final polyplay game, where the player is tasked with preventing a room from flooding. In a room above, a water pipe has burst, and the player must catch water drops into a bucket in order to prevent the water level from rising. All the games in polyplay seem to be very, very simple, and also not very well coded. But you can't really blame the developers for that, since, well, the Soviet Union was on their head, so they couldn't really design a very good game with the things they had because capitalist media was heavily, heavily censored. So I'd say that, considering they were very heavily censored by the higher-ups of the country, I'd say they did pretty damn well. Now that I've explained the gist of the arcade cabinet and the games included, you may think that what I'm saying might be somewhat familiar. The reason for this is because the game Polyplay shares a disturbing number of similarities to the urban legend arcade cabinet, Polybius. For one thing, both cabinets supposedly have no artwork on the sides, with both being blank cabinets except for the marquee. Furthermore, both cabinets were released and seen to by high up powers, Polyplay being used by the members of the FDGB and mysterious men in black visiting the Polybius cabinet. Also, there are conflicting 
opinions on Polybius gameplay, with some accounts saying that it was a game with many mini-games, much like Polyplay. As well as this, Polyplay's marquee font and Polybius marquee font look almost identical, with the same electronic look to it. I personally believe that the person who wrote Polybius took a massive inspiration from Polyplay when coming up with the story. So there you have it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. A big, big thank you to UK Kraut Gamer, as he is the person I've got most of this information from. And please, please go and check out his channel and go and check out his video on Polyplay. Since he actually grew up in West Germany and went into an arcade and knew of its existence when it first came out. He's an absolutely cool dude. Please go check out his channel. Anyway guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.